people here know who he is. I just want to read a real quick little saying that a member of the audience told me about. This is from Solzhenitsyn, and this is one of the reasons I think we're all here, and we kind of have to remind ourselves why we're doing this. He says, and how we burned in the cabin Slater thinking, what would things have been like if every security operative, when he went out at night to make an arrest, had been uncertain whether he would return alive and had to say goodbye to his family? Or if during periods of mass arrests, as for example in Leningrad, when they arrested a quarter of the entire city, people had not simply sat there in their lairs, paling with terror at every bang on the downstairs door and every step on the staircase, but had understood that they had nothing left to lose and had boldly set up in the downstairs hall an ambush of half a dozen people with axes, hammers, pokers, whatever else was on hand. After all, you knew ahead of time that those blue caps were out at night for no good purpose. If, if, but we didn't love freedom enough. That's what makes this country great. It's not diversity, it's freedom. Yeah. Bill Cooper. Thank you, Tony. Uh, thank you. Well, you sure know how to uh, make me feel very humble. Thank you so much. I think one of the biggest misconceptions in this country is what this country is all about, who founded it, for what purpose, and most specifically, what it is that we're all looking for. I'm going to try to clarify some of those, and in doing it, as always happens, someone's going to be angry with my definition of some of these things. I've traveled all over the country. I've talked to probably hundreds of thousands of people individually over a lot of years. I've broadcast a radio show that brings me thousands of letters every week. I administer the world's largest and most successful civilian intelligence gathering operation in the world, which makes me privy to an awful lot of information that none of you will ever see, and there's so much of it, I can never present it in a form that you would be able to look at it and digest it. So that puts a pretty big burden on me and the people who work with me in the intelligence service and in the CAGI news service in order to digest this information, analyze it, and be able to present to you what we believe, and this is a subjective judgment, what you can digest and what you need to know at that particular time. And in doing this, digesting all this information, reading all of these letters from people of every kind of background that you can imagine, every race, every religion, every kind of agenda. And believe me, there's an awful lot of agendas going on in this country that are dangerous to Americans. Being promoted by people who claim to be Americans, who claim to be patriots, and who claim to be doing the best for this country, including those who want to destroy it and bring about a one world totalitarian socialist government. They sincerely believe in their heart they're doing the right thing for humankind. You see, nobody gets up in the morning and sets out to do evil. Nobody consciously does that. I've never met any person in my entire life who said, I'm evil, I'm going to do evil things, I like to do evil things, I want to do evil things. They don't exist, in my knowledge. They may exist somewhere, people like Jeffrey Dahmer. And I believe that even Jeffrey Dahmer probably rationalized what he was doing in his own mind to make it right. Isn't that the way we all do things? Even if we do something wrong and we know we're doing something wrong, don't we attempt to rationalize it in our own mind and to our friends to justify what we're doing? So I believe it's a great fallacy to set out to brand those whom we disagree with as being evil people. The result of their actions, we may perceive to be evil. We may perceive it to be bad. But I guarantee you those people don't see it that way. And when we present ourselves to them in that light, we're good and they're evil, 
Do you think we have a chance of getting them to listen to us? Not on your life. It's not going to happen. So I think we have to change the way we talk. We have to talk to them in a different manner. Now don't take what I'm going to tell you standing up here today and compare it to what I say on the radio and expect the two to concur. Because when I'm here, I'm just Bill Cooper. I'm talking to you from my heart. When I'm on the radio, I am on a mission. And that mission is to slap people upside the head and wake them up and even make them hate me if that's what it takes to get them to go examine what I'm telling them to find out that it's right. You see, I don't care how it's done as long as they wake up. And if I have to be the bad guy that they're going to hate for the rest of their life, that's okay with me if I wake them up. But when I'm here talking like this, that's not my mission. Because you're awake already or you wouldn't be here. You see? There's a difference between the people here and the people that I'm talking to over those airwaves. Big difference. An awful lot of you are steady listeners of the hour of the time and have been probably for many years. And when I'm talking on the radio, I know who you are and I'm not talking to you. And I know that when you're listening and I talk about the sheeple, the stupid sheeple, it doesn't make you angry. You know why? Because you know you're not stupid sheeple, don't you? The person that gets angry has verified that I was right. Because he wouldn't get angry if he didn't know in his heart that he's a stupid sheeple. You ever been walking down the street and somebody comes running out and says, Bank robber! Bank robber! Stop that bank robber! Do you start running? <laughs> Why don't you start running? Because you're not the bank robber, right? Do you get angry? No. Do you pay attention most of the time? If you're from a big city, chances are you don't even look around. Right? Now if you're from a small town where I'm at, I mean people will come running out in the street to see the bank robber because small town and not much excitement goes on there unless the IRS comes to mess with me. <laughs> so, what I'm going to talk to you about today comes from my heart, from my experience in life, from playing this role as messenger, which I take very seriously, from my efforts to wake up the American people, from my family, from all the letters that I get, the people that I talk to, just like I've talked to many of you here today, I've learned some things. And I think these things need to be passed on to you. And I think you need to start examining yourself, your agenda, your mission. Who are you? What are you about? What do you believe about America? Is it true? Are you helping to divide us more? Or are you helping to bring us together? Do you really understand what this country is all about? Now, I know this is going to make some of you angry. That's okay. I know that it's going to open some doors for some of you. I hope that it will bring us all a little bit closer together. And I hope that everybody, once you've examined your own particular agenda, will try to make it fit better into what we should really be doing. And I'm going to start off way back in history, folks, because that's really where it began. The human race is young in the, in the whole scope of the life of the, of the Earth. We're just a, a young species, really. Haven't been around for a long time compared to everything else that's in this world. And I'm not talking about biblical years, and I'm not talking about theory of evolution years. I'm talking about from the time when you can see that man emerged on the historical scale of this world and began to...